morning. It's Monday again, isn't that great? You get you get to do another another Monday morning. No matter how badly you screwed it up last week, you get to try it again. That's God's grace. All right, uh, we are back again with Real Talk with Devin Will. We hope that you had a great weekend, that it was restful and relaxing, relaxing and restorative, and you're ready to attack the week with vim and vigor and excitement to make changes that need to be made and to hold on to things that are working. We had a, a, a very, as you can see in the show notes, we have a, a very good show. This is one that you want to tell you that you want to tell your friends about, that you'll want to watch again on YouTube, that you'll want to, uh, you know what, talk about it amongst your coworkers today uh, and 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 this week because this is the, the, boil down what a, group, a good relationship is down to ten ten things, and they are in no particular order. But I think that that is the ten things that you have to have. The most of you need these successful ingredients. Successful in your relationships. Yeah. It's, it's like when you're making making a, a, a soup that you need these ten things to make that soup. Now it may not matter in that you put the peas in first or the carrots in first or the onions in first, uh, but you got to have them all in there. Got to have the ingredients to make it taste good. Yeah. To make it work. To make it work. Yes, and it's got to work. All right, so uh, we're going to just get started right away because I, I know that uh, our, our Facebook friends, we are a little tardy. Not much tardy, really, but a little tardy. But, a little tardy. But what are you going to do? Too much partying on the weekend. Yeah, yeah, too much partying. Too much, <laughs> yeah, especially Sunday night. We party it up. Yeah, yeah, okay, <laughs> not. <laughs> not. But we do enjoy ourselves. Yeah, but I mean. There ain't no partying going on here. No. I don't even know the name of a club in town. I don't know the name of one I club. I was watching. Yeah. We about that the weekend. Yeah, I don't think we'll be going there anytime soon. <laughs> or ever. All right. So um, pick one. There's ten. That, and then again, these are in no particular order. Yes. Okay. Um, what what are the most important things in, in a relationship and as always we're not particularly talking about a marriage relationship but you need these things in order to make your friendships and, and families and everything to work well um, uh, throughout your your life um, the first one that I have is trust um, you need to feel you can trust the person you you are with um, especially in a marriage because if you can't trust that person and you are um, going and checking their phone and their emails and and all of this stuff like that's just more stress on the relationship that you really don't need um, having all of the all of these things that we're listening today takes a lot of the stress out of a relationship once you are at the point where you have all these ingredients in your relationships you can enjoy each other I mean how can you enjoy somebody that you don't trust and you're you know every time they go to the bathroom you you looking at their phone or or when they leave their PC up you gotta go over there and you know check in to see what's going on in there you know what they're doing um trust yeah yeah you know what i i, I you know, and, and it seems to be the the new thing that people are doing now especially when it comes to phones uh because we do a lot of communication with people on, on our phones it seems to be the new thing that that you have to check people's phones uh, before it was like you had to check people's emails i'm not really even sure if you feel that, if you think that it is important to keep tabs on someone to that degree where you have to make sure that their phone is clean for you, they may not be the person that you want to be with. Yes, even. if you can't trust them I mean, that if, much. If, if, if you're worried consistently and constantly about who they may be communicating with on their phone, emails they may be sending, websites they may be visiting, if you're consistently and constantly worried about those kind of things, I think there are other things that you really should be reconsidering. You may be reconsidering a relationship with that person at any level Period. anyway. You know, at uh, all. If, if, if that's what you feel you have to do. Um, cause I, cause I, I don't think, that's, I, I don't think that, that's a good, like you said, you know, it's, the stress is too much. Um, 
and the and, and, and the just the ah of it is way too much. And life is too short to be living like that all the time. Because I got news for you, I don't think I'm, I don't think it'll ever get any better. No, if you, especially if you're dating and you're doing that, um, that it's not going to get any better. And some people think, well, if he marries me, then he won't be doing all of that stuff. Or, or, or he thinks if if she'll marry me, then Ma she won't have all of that those issues going. It, it doesn't get. It's not going to change. If you can't trust them and you're dating them. Getting married is not going to make it any better. No, so so when they go on that so when they go on that business trip for three days, that they have to go on because their company because the company sends them on the business trip across the country for three days. What are you going to do? We, I mean, you're going to make sure that you call them every waking hour. Or I mean, again, it it won't get any better just because you get married. It won't get any better. As a matter of fact because of how life works sometimes, it may even get worse. Mm -hmm. And so if you feel, you think that you need to do that now because that's the way to do it and that's the, that's the thing that your friends are advising you to do, it may not be the relationship you want to be in. Just saying. Yes. Ain't hating. Just saying. <laughs> Number two. Dos. Honesty. Um, Honesty. <laughs> that goes along with the trustworthiness of, of a relationship. Um, the person must be honest with you. If they're not being honest, there brings in the fact that you can't trust them. So um, when you, and, and some people start out a relationship with little white lies, you know, um, telling people, you know, what they, they own or what they have and all of this stuff like this and if you're lying to somebody you're just meeting and you want you want to build a relationship with that you person, will continue to lie to them yes and then they won't trust you because eventually these things will be found out that your parents don't have a nine-room mansion um, that you didn't go to the finest finishing schools um, that your other cars in the shop and you're driving this 74 Pinto because you, because your Tesla's in the shop, stop up. And 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 I, and I and I think in the dating thing, people are trying, especially guys. They're trying to impress the other person. Yeah, they want to make you think they're something different, so that you will go with them or go out with them. You know, because because the reality is, yes, this is my '74 Pinto, and I paid four hundred dollars for it, <laughs> and this is my car. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. You got you have to get in the other side because the passenger door doesn't work. <laughs> that's not a great. That, that's not a great lead. It's not a great date lead. I, I I I realize that. But if you can if you can be truthful in the small things, hey Sheila, if you can be truthful in the small things like that, that should at least show the person that you're dating that you're authentic. You're, mm -hmm. I mean, you're up front. They can trust you. No, my parents don't live in a nine-room mansion. They live in a two-bedroom apartment. Um, and we've lived there forever. If you can be truthful about those things, people should be able to trust you to be authentic about the things that, that suddenly will really matter later. Because you've always been um, forthwith. You've always been up front. And, um, and, I, and, and, I, and I think in the days that we live in that everybody is Instagram famous that you want to live your life like your Instagram account with everything perfect, everything, everything wonderful. Everything looking wonderful. The right filter on, everything everything wonderful. I think that it's harder and harder for people to be upfront. And honest. And honest. About who they really are. Because a lot of times you see people on Facebook and Instagram and all this stuff and you think, wow, their life is just awesome. And it really isn't. It, you know, it's, it's fake. And and then you, tr uh, a, a lot of times, you know, I often wonder about girls that go out on dates with guys and stuff, and they have these fake butts and fake breasts, and they have makeup layered and layered and layered, and they look like the, you know, some movie stars and all this stuff. And then, you know, if you plan on making a re lifetime relationship with this person, they want to eventually see. The real yo, your real face, your real breasts. Yes. Your real butt. <laughs> yeah. They will see them see. They and will when see you that take that waist trainer off and your belly hanging over. And that, and, and, and you can see the cement in your behind. You're like. 
Why your booty so hard? <laughs> <laughs> the truth will eventually come out. And I'm not saying that you can't make yourself look presentable and and look good and everything, but you got to be honest at some point about what's going on. Yeah, and I, I you know, and I, and, I, and I think that's true. And I think there's, you know, guys have a problem with the honesty, but but but, but, but girls have a have a similar problem. Um, like Debbie mentioned, I wasn't going to mention that because it would be y'all be mad at me if I did, uh, I mentioned that. But you know what? That's a, that that's the deal. Are you presenting your authentic self? Is that really is that really you? Um, are you are are you trying to be something that that you think that somebody would be attracted to, um, or want to be in relationship with, or are you just being yourself? <clears throat> Most of the time, you will get more mileage out of just being yourself. You will, you, you will attract the people who you need to be attracted who need to be attracted to you if you're just who you are. Um, if you try to be somebody else, you first of all you won't be very good at it. And second of all, you will attract people who will, who will be looking for your inauthentic self, and you can't keep that up. And as soon as they find out, now they won't trust you. Because you haven't given them reason to trust you. That's when the checking the phone and all that stuff come in. <laughs> and you don't want to, and, 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 and really, you, you don't want to live like that. Nobody wants to live like that. Okay, number three. Respect. Trace. Trace. Having respect for each other's um, uh, strengthens your relationship. R -E -F -E um, <laughs> love is not justification for disrespecting or abusing somebody. Um, and if you if you notice that in these these categories that we mentioned, we're not mentioning love because you gotta have love. But gotta have love. all these other things are Sorry. really more important because yeah. once you fall in love with somebody, you that's the that's the easy part to love them, but you gotta respect. Um, respect the, the fact that you know that they may not like to do something. Respect the fact that they they have certain issues and different things going on that you know uh, love may not be strong enough for. Yeah, you have to yeah you have to understand that uh, you have to respect them first as a person um, as another human being on the planet and you have to respect um, especially in dating you have to respect boundaries um, you have to respect um, you know their upbringing you have to uh, you know respect them as again as a person um, when you get married and and we talked about this in a previous video that I'll put right up wait 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 there there um little eye thing you can click on it um but you have to we talked about um the submissive woman um the bible says that the, it's interesting and I, I and i still think it's interesting the bible says though the, that the wife is supposed to respect her husband the bible says also that, that the man is supposed to love his wife which includes respect obviously uh, nowhere does it say that the, um, the the wife has to love their their husband, and I think that was because they had arranged marriages. Mm -hmm. I think that, that's probably why. I think that that's why. Because a lot of times the people you married, you weren't. You didn't, you didn't even love know. Them. <laughs> love them. You didn't even know them. Mm -hmm. They just show up and go, "Okay, it's time to get hitched." Families will hit you. You've been promised to this person. Yes, they'd bring some some sheep and some goats. Some handshakes were made, and off you went. But uh, which I think. Would not be such a bad idea now. Uh, not the sheep, sheep's and goats, but arranging marriage. yeah, arranged marriages. I, I'm, I'm not totally, I'm not totally against that. Because um, people eventually do fall in love. Well, and the people who are deciding are the people who aren't emotionally involved. The people who are on the outside looking and going, this seems to make sense. Anyway, um, so but the respect portion is extremely important because what that actually does it, it, it lets your partner it lets your um, dating partner understand that you understand that they are that you are not the only person in the world I think the lack of respect comes from um, selfishness when you don't respect somebody else you think that the way that you want to you want to do things and how you how things you think our things ought to go is the most important and the only thing that's important that you're the most important thing in the world. And what I want gold. Period. Who has a problem with that? 
like I said, we're not perfect people. <laughs> like, like, like I said, um, but you know. So the deal is that that's something that's really important. It's important to respect your partner. Yes, and and I'm not saying, hey Judy, uh, and I'm not saying that all these things have to be at a level ten when you get into a relationship. What we're saying is that all these all these ingredients have to eventually be there for that relationship to be successful. You have to bring them up and you have to work on them in all your the relationship time. All the time. consistently. All the time. Um, like, uh, uh, like I was just saying, I work on certain things and that, that because I'm a spoiled child. I came from being spoiled. My parents gave me what, what I wanted. And sometimes I have a problem with not getting what I want. That's the honest truth. <laughs> So, you have to work on those things. And we've been married for 30 years, known each other nearly 34. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. And, you know, <laughs> it's something you have to work on consistently through your marriage. Marriage is not just going to work just because you love each other. It's not. There's all sorts of other components that have to be there. Uh, you, can, you, can, you can love your car, but if you don't take care of it, it's going to fail on you. You can love it, but if you don't put gas in it and oil in it and wash it and take care of it and make sure that all the all the parts work, it's going to fail on you. Yes. Um, and that's the deal. So what's the next thing? Um, the next hey, thing, number four, is communication. And we bring this up so many times when we're talking about because communication is the key in the relationship, in any relationship. Um, you got to communicate what you're feeling, what you're thinking, what you want, um, you know, what your needs are to the person, and, and they have to reciprocate. You know, they, you got to talk and you have about to, everything. And you have to understand, and I think that you have to understand, especially guys, you have to understand what communication is. Um, I think bo our both partners, let me rephrase that, I have to understand what communication is. Um, turning on the fire hose of frustration is not communication. And what I mean by that is when you're frustrated that you grab the fire hose of your frustration and you aim it at the other person until they acquiesce. That is not communication. <gasps> oh, okay, fine. That's not I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's not communication. That really isn't. Communication is one of those things that goes back and forth. And you have to understand that how people are hearing what you're saying. Because if they're, if, if they're hearing it differently than you're saying it, then you're really not communicating what you want. Mm -hmm. Then you got to find a different way of expressing it. You know, because we, we go through that back and forth sometimes because I'll say something thinking that he understands it when he has no idea. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> it's like, okay, so let about. me rephrase this. Let Please. me say it differently. Say it, say it differently. Because males and females process things differently in their mind. You're thinking... <laughs> what? <laughs> You're thinking... Write that down. <laughs> women think in one way, you know, and you're thinking, oh, he didn't even notice, he didn't even do this, he didn't even blah, 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 blah. And it's the farthest thing it from never, his mind. It never occurred. It never occurred. Um, and, and, and so you have to say what you want him to see. And you there, have to say it. <laughs> there are physio and there are physiological differences in how, how how male brains work and how female brains work. Um, and this whole idea that everybody's brain is the same is causing a lot of this angst and frustration. Um, the uh, the fact is that, that that the brains work differently. Now I don't know why they work differently. Maybe they work differently because. Um, guys had to go out and you know what and and wrestle saber toothed tigers to get food. They can't be have all that passion <coughs> and and sympathy and you know Maybe. caring and all of that that wussy stuff. Well, the thing is, well, well, I don't I don't know if I'd even call it that. But women's brain, women's you you there's so many connections on both sides of the brain. So facts are often attached to emotions, where in the male brain, facts are often not attached to emotions. So, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of guys have gone through this where uh, there is something that happened and then your, then your wife feels a certain way about it. 
And then she asked me, well, how you feel about it? You're like, I don't know. I don't know. They didn't even notice it. <laughs> because they, didn't, because they, they didn't even see it. Because it didn't get to the other side. Of, it didn't get to the feeling side of my brain. It was a fact. This happened. Huh. Okay. <laughs> so I don't know that. I have no idea how I feel about it. I have no idea. And we're over there like, oh my God. Can you imagine what they're all going, what they're all going through? No. No. Because <laughs> it never, it just not, because it just never got to the other side of my brain. It just never, it just, the fact never crossed the great divide that's in my brain. So that's why it's important that you as a woman communicate to him what you're thinking what you're feeling and and you know what the situation that happened that you explain to him why you feel that way you know and sometimes well both both male and female you're carrying stuff from years ago that somebody did and that made you trigger and think about it and you're going you know it it makes you feel that same way so you're you're emotional about it and they could care less. Well, it, 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 it isn't like I don't care. It, it's like I don't get it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and I'm sure if anybody who's watching has been married before or, or, or is married now, been married in, in, in any length of time, you have gone to your husband or you've gone to your boyfriend and said, What are you thinking about? <laughs> and they say, Nothing. Nothing. Because guys can, I'm telling you, I am telling you, if he tells you he's thinking about nothing, 99.997% of the time, not thinking about anything. He's not thinking about anything. He's not deep in thought. He's not thinking about his future. He's not thinking about where is his relationship going. He's not thinking about anything. He's just sitting there. His brain is not off because he's still breathing, but it's damn sure in neutral. <laughs> it's, like, it's just keeping the basic functions going until you say something. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. And I don't know why guys' brains work that way, but they certainly do. <laughs> yes. So communicate, ladies, to them what you're feeling and what your thoughts are because they're not going to come to you and and try to try to express certain emotions and all this stuff they're not equipped and guys know that your wife or or or, or your girlfriend's going to come to you um with uh, sometimes and because of the other way their brain works um it doesn't make them weaker it doesn't make it just makes it different that that's why they attach emotions um to situations where you don't think it's an emotional thing because their brain works differently, and understand and understand that and respect that um, before you react in a way that's a negative way that that's truly inappropriate or disrespectful. Understand how they're coming at you with certain things. Yes. Next, loyalty. Being faithful to your partner and are are in a relationship. Um, you know, if you're not going to be f- faithful, loyal to this person, um, then just remain friends. Don't, don't, don't get some in a, in a marriage or make a commitment that you know that you can't stick to. If you're not ready, don't, uh, just cause your girl says, oh, we need, when are you going to give me a ring? When are you going to give me a ring? You know, they pounding and pounding and pounding. Don't pound them about that. If they don't bring it up that they want to marry you, maybe they don't. And you pressure them into it and then they can't be faithful. Whose fault is that? Well, and loyalty is, is important because um, of and this is kind of how this conversation started um, yesterday, um, that you've got to be able to have someone who has your back. Mm -hmm. And you'll see it in a lot of situations. You'll see it when people are dealing with family situations. Um, Does your partner have your back? Does your partner have your back against your frenemies? Does your partner have your back um, all the time? Is that person always ready to protect you? To stand to stand up for you, um, you see in 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 the workplace a lot of times you see so many people who come to work and complain about their spouse. Yes. Oh, my husband is blah 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 blah. Oh, my wife is so blah 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 blah. Friends, that's not loyalty. 
If it's you not. have a fault with your, your spouse, go to your spouse. There comes that communication. And, and if it's not a big, big enough deal to come to them with, definitely don't expand it. Just have something to talk about at, at lunch work. With, your, with your co-workers. Because everybody else is, 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 is complaining about, well, there's my, you know, my husband doesn't do this, he doesn't do that. Oh, my wife doesn't do that. And my, that's not loyalty. No. Because the fact is, is that when you become married, you're, you're one. So what are you doing when you do that? You're you're bashing yourself. And I think that I think a lot of people make make that mistake because it's what kind of what people do. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's normal for somebody to come in and complain about their spouse. Oh, he don't do that, and he blah blah blah. Oh, my husband too. And you, and then you get you come come you have this camaraderie. You know, you bashing back and forth when you you're beating down your relationship and and how are you and how do you how do you consider that being loyal you know a lot of times you are i mean a lot i think we've seen a lot of times where spouses haven't stepped in um or or even like in a friendship relationship i you know i teach i teach kids and it's if you have a friendship relationship and you go to a group of people and they're talking bad about your friend how you know you have a good relationship is that if you stand up for your friend when it's not comfortable. Yes. When they're not there. When they're not there. When they're not there to defend themselves, you stand you stand up for them. You know, and, and if you've got a friend who's done that for you and you find out about it later, they didn't even tell you that they that they yes. did it for you. Somebody else tells you. <laughs> then you know that that person is a keeper. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing in a romantic relationship. When you find out that some that your that, that your spouse or your girlfriend has stood up for you, and you find out from somebody else, you got to keep. You got a good. good that's what. For you. That's the kind of people. And, and 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 in general, that's the kind of people you want to be around. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of folks you want to be around. You want to be around people who really have your back, not just when it's there or to their benefit. It may even be. It may even be to their detriment. They may even. They may even lose, lose jobs or something, something because they backed you. Because up. They, because they stood up for you. And that's the kind of loyalty that you gotta have. I think in a marriage relationship. I think that that's, mm -hmm. you know, the kind of loyalty that you have to have. And 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 I realize that when you're first in a marriage. Or first in a friendship or relationship, it's it's tough to 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 do things like that. If you've had a regular way that you are always going, and you you've never had to have somebody's back. Some people never have had to do that. If you're you didn't have a family that was strong, a strong backing in a family or whatever, your nature is just to sit back and not say anything. You hear them talking about somebody, or hear. Here, that you know and you know that's not the way they are it may not be your nature to stand up for them um, but you should learn this in a relationship learn that you have got to have loyalty you got to back that person up you know in the good times and the bad times I have a lot of <laughs> I'm going to say this I have, I have some friends I have some really close friends really close, close guy friends that um, are strong personalities. Mm -hmm. I would say that. <laughs> strong personalities, and I and I understand how sometimes they rub people the wrong way, but both of these guys I have known for thirty plus years, and I know who they are, and I know what kind of people they are, um, and I am quick to defend them because I know them, and I know what they've meant to me. And what they will do for you. But I don't have to call them up and say, hey, you know what, man, I had your back today. No, because I, I already have their back. And you know what? They're, I know they've got mine. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of loyalty that we're talking about. All right, so we're going to have to make an edit, so we need to get out of here. And do, do we do five? That's five. Cool, we did five. Five. <laughs> and we will do the other five next week. Next week. Monday. On Monday. So until we see you again, go out there and learn something, love somebody, and for goodness sakes, y'all take care of yourself. Peace. We'll see you when we see you. Love you. Let's see if we can click the button. I'm having trouble with this button. <laughs> I am. <laughs>